1972, opening day of spring training, yeah. Bing Devine calls me about 8, 8.30 in the morning and uh, it tells me in so many words that I got traded to the to the lowly Phillies at that time. And uh, I guess it's a, it's a matter of fact that uh, he and Mr. Bush and, and Bing Devine had had a disagreement um, over salary. I said, Bing, 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 can we, you know, can we reconsider, you know? I said, we were extremely fortunate that um, Bing Devine, I don't know which clubs he called first, but certainly we must have been near the top of the list, possibly because geographically Clearwater was close to St. Pete, where they were, where they were having their spring, uh, spring train. And here, here I am off to a uh, last place ball club feeling that, you know, you lost your best friend kind of a situation. And Rick Wise was a pretty good pitcher, but we had all been fortunate enough to see Steve pitch. And it was, Mr. Quinn, if you can make that deal, God, make it as soon as you can. So really, for a big deal like it is, uh, it was probably the fastest deal with two, two yeah. or three five-minute phone calls that was ever made. Steve Carlton captured the imagination and affection of the fans like no Philadelphia sports figure before. The love affair was achieved with style and brilliance. Steve Carlton was a great pitcher in St. Louis. He came to the Phillies in a deal for Rick Wise that shocked both cities. The trade was a blessing in disguise is what it turned out to be. I'm extremely happy to be in Philadelphia. Uh, I wouldn't want it any other way now. But it turned out to be a blessing in disguise. I'd never, I'd, I'd, I got more entrenched mentally than I've ever, ever been in my, my life because it was like, perceived desperate situation at the time. The, the thing that I remember in that year more than anything it was we had a very bad baseball team. It was young, but every fifth day when he pitched, he seemed to elevate everybody's play. I mean, we knew as a team that if we went out and scored one or two runs, we had a chance of winning. Being an infielder, playing behind Steve Carlton makes playing baseball a pleasure. The reason for this is because uh, when he gets on the mound, he doesn't pitch, pitch it with his cap or play around with a rosin bag. He get, looks down and gets a sign. And he's in complete command with all his pitches. He's a great person. He's a great team man. And I think he's been a big inspiration, not only to the people here in Philadelphia, but for the young ball players that are on this ball club. All he wanted was the same that I did, I guess, is that he wanted 24 hour a day dedication to whatever you were doing. And then 72, I really thrived on all the work. I was in a tremendous groove. I was so incredibly focused mentally. I just uh, hardly ever threw a ball over the heart of the plate. I just so so entrenched never looked at the hitter you know just i was wired as far as where i was going to throw the pitch throw any pitch anytime and it was just the team the team rallied and, and played such a, a wonderful game of defense and they they got runs for me and and we made the best of uh, the situation it had uh, limited ability at that time you know? when the season ended he had won 27 ball games he would lead the national league in strikeouts innings pitch earned run average, and when the season ended, Steve Carlton, by unanimous vote of the nation's sports writers, won the coveted Cy Young Award, emblematic of the best pitcher in the National League. To show their appreciation, the Phillies and the fans gave him a special night. 1972, a season Steve Carlton and Philadelphia will never forget. <laughs>